Due to the development of these empathic capacities, man has been able to achieve higher levels of social and collective consciousness as he adds broader and more profound cultural values to them. Thus, only when one human finally understands what another human feels and needs, is it possible to create cultural agreements based on concepts like respect, freedom, and brotherhood. Sight is an example of a complex subdivision of certain mental activities. The information coming from the eyes does not have one processing center, but 30. Each one of them is specialized in a sub-function like color, depth, size, and movement. That is why it's not surprising that there are pathologies in which patients who do not have damaged sight organs have lost functions like the ability to see color, to perceive movement, to see sharp images, or to understand the content being seen. These images have been obtained by means of a camera through the emission of positrons. This is a nuclear medical technique used in neurological exploration, which makes it possible to obtain functional images of the brain. Thanks to these technological developments, we can now see what happens in the brain during certain activities, like recalling events from infancy, memorizing a number, doing a simple mental calculation, imagining a familiar scene, remembering a face, or experiencing sensations while looking at a photograph. Until today, we could only examine these activities using psychological techniques techniques used for observation outside of the subject. We would ask them to answer a question more or less quickly, and we would ask them to point to some objects, etc. But we obtained only indirect results. With the new methods, we asked them to carry out a task, like searching for words, making a calculation, making up sentences or looking at objects, the normal tests used in this field. And we record their brain activity while they carry out these tasks without interfering with them. Therefore, we can study different phenomena like memory, perception, and reasoning. Technological advances are approaching the dream of every neuroscientist, discovering the mystery behind superior cerebral or cognitive functions that allow for thinking, memorizing, reasoning, and planning actions. Nevertheless, present-day machines are still far from making this discovery. One reason, among many others, is because the speed at which the brain works is still unachievable for machines. The chemical and electrical processes of the brain develop like sparks that are produced in a thousandth of a second. In any other way, it would be impossible to carry out a process in such a short period of time, like capturing a signal, processing it, associating it with some fact in the memory, adding some element of the imagination to it, and finally generating a deduction or a mental conclusion. We have made a lot of progress with this technique and we will continue to make more progress. But we lack certain advances that would avoid the risk of blocking the investigation. More specifically, we need to be able to use these techniques directly. 
Or, comme euh, je vous l'ai dit tout à l'heure, euh, les techniques métaboliques comme... Euh, the metabolic techniques, par, like magnetic resonance images, or the use of a camera with the emission of positrons, euh, are techniques that need, in some way, evaluation periods that are not very long. But in any case, they are much longer than cognitive periods. Il faut savoir que pour euh, produire une, une phrase ou pour euh, produire un raisonnement, le, le cerveau va très vite. Il a besoin seulement And to produce de a sentence euh, or a thought, the brain or acts very fast. It needs only a few seconds, and the techniques that are used at this time to create a brain map are techniques that require higher acquisition periods. They take about a minute. De plusieurs dizaines de secondes, presque de l'ordre de la minute. Fish placed in front of a mirror are not able to recognize themselves and interpret their own image as if it were an enemy attacking them. Like most species, they do not realize that they are fish. They are not conscious of what they are. Mammals, on the other hand, manifest a primary consciousness that allows them to perceive sensations as their own. They can sense the rain falling, the sound it makes, the wetness of their skin, and the smell of wet ground. Primates like the chimpanzee or the orangutan go a little farther and present basic forms of self-recognition through which they can identify themselves as the image they see in the mirror. Their emotions are also more complex than just mere sensations. An ape feels sorrow over death or the loss of a mother, and they can suffer traumas in the development of their intellectual abilities due to being left an orphan or due to seeing a family member hunted and killed. But man is the only species with an advanced consciousness with which he can perceive himself, realize who he is, understand what he is doing and what he feels. This means that only man can observe himself and theorize about his own mind. Consciousness is such an extraordinary phenomenon that it has led scientists to ask if there is a place in the brain where it could be located. The contents of consciousness are the most distributed ones of all because they are polysensory, they are holistic. It's always everything that is lifted by attention into consciousness that is available at the same time. So I think this is the most distributed of all states. And um, I think neuropsychology confirms this. There is not a place in the brain that you can destroy um, to get rid of consciousness, unless you destroy the power supply. You destroy systems that the brain needs to work, and then it goes into coma, or it goes to sleep, and if it doesn't dream, then there is no consciousness. Um, so I don't think that one should look for, for a place. One should rather look for the code that binds these distributed activities into a coherent whole, as the important variable if one talks about uh, a key to consciousness. The symptoms of people with an amputated extremity show how the brain is surprisingly conscious of the body. These people complain of pain in this non-existent extremity, which is also known as a phantom limb. Each part of the body is linked to a specific region of the brain, which processes information transmitted through the corresponding nervous branches.